Okay, this is Griffiths Electrodynamics, problem 5.14. We are looking at uh, a wire with a current I traveling down it. The wire has a radius of A. And we're going to look at two different situations. <coughs> One in which the uh, current is uh, carried along the wire only at the outer surface. So you could kind of picture the, the current as sort of a tube. All right, um, right. There's no current in the middle, only on the outer surface. <coughs> That's the first situation. The second is that uh, the current density is proportional to the distance from the center of the wire. So uh, maybe dead center, there's uh, no current. But it <laughs> if you were to just take a profile going out from the center of the wire, it would increase linearly out to some uh, constant value around uh, the outer surface of the wire. So these two situations, and, and this is basically an Ampere's law problem. So you'll find it's very similar to Gauss's law, and that's what we're going to do. So Ampere's law is if we take the uh, path integral right around a, a closed loop and uh, the, the d d infinitesimal displacement along our path we dot that with the magnetic field all right <coughs> this integral is equal to the permeability of free space mu naught multiplied by uh, the enclosed current, so I enclosed. So that's um, very helpful, especially on the first part of our problem, uh, because, well, what we were trying to do is find the magnetic field B, both inside the wire and outside the wire. So looking at the first part of the problem, suppose we take our Amperian loop and we just look here at some point, uh, we, we bring it out to some radius, but that's still inside the wire. So using a radial or a, or a cylindrical coordinate system that Griffiths uses, we'll use the variable s for <coughs> this distance here out to the uh, radius of our Amperian loop. Call that s. So for s less than a, remember this is uh, for the first case, meaning all of the current is on the outer surface of the wire. There's no current inside here. So when I draw my Amperian loop on the inside of this wire, the enclosed current is zero. So that tells us if we were to take a, a circular uh, loop here, we do this uh, dot product, right? And we get a, a 2 pi s for our, <coughs> our integral around uh, this path. Well, that's equal to 0. And uh, that doesn't matter what this s is as long as it's less than a. So that just tells us that our magnetic field is equal to zero as long as we're inside uh, the wire. Again, for the first uh, situation, all the current is on the outside surface of the wire. By the way, when we look at this this B here, it's a vector. Um, whereas uh, the little shortcut way we do our integral using symmetry, uh, we're working with scalars right here. So just uh, using this nice shortcut way how do we detail how do we tell the direction of this vector once we use this formula uh, to find the magnitude <coughs> we could just use the right hand rule so if we take our right hand and we point our thumb in the direction of the current then our fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic field so in, in that case it would be kind of around the outside like this. Okay.
that's when there is a magnetic field, when it's not equal to zero, that's the direction it would uh, curl around the wire. In. All right. So what about for, um, yeah, let's do it here. What about for S larger than A? So now we take our Amperian loop and we bring it outside the wire. Well, now we are containing our, we're enclosing our current, which is on the outer surface of the wire. And so now this side of the equation does not go to zero. <coughs> so uh, we, we have our, our B uh, two pi S here, right? And instead of zero, now it is equal to mu naught i, where i is just given in the problem. That's the total current traveling down this wire. All right. This tells us b is equal to this mu naught i divided by 2 pi s. <coughs> this is just the magnitude. You can see it drops off as 1 over s. And if we're going to um, uh, call it a vector, right, we want to know the direction. Let's call it phi, all right, where phi uh, is, is going around uh, this wire um, according to the right-hand rule. If, if I, if we, if we call this, <coughs> if I is traveling in the z direction, then uh, in a right-handed cylindrical coordinate system, phi would be going around this way. All right, that's the easy part. <coughs> oh, I lied. There's one more easy part. Um, for our second situation. Uh, we still have a total current of I traveling down this wire, but again, uh, for our second situation, all the current is not on the outer surface of this wire. It's actually uh, linearly increasing as you travel out from the center, meaning um, uh, the way this is, uh, uh, the current density is proportional to S, the distance from uh, the central axis of the wire. All right, so let's just write this as um, the uh, current density is equal to some constant, we'll just call it k, we always call constants k, s, multiplied by s. All right, this is going to play a big role when we find the, um, the magnetic field on the inside of the wire. However, our, our last little uh, easy part here, when we find, <laughs> the, excuse me, when we find our magnetic field on the outside of the wire, the enclosed current is still just I. Um, I is the total current going down the wire in both cases. So that means our answer is going to be the same for S greater than A as it was in the previous part. So let's just write that down first. For S greater than A, we'll just copy down our answer from before. The total enclosed current is still I. Mu naught I over 2 pi S. Phi hat, that's our magnetic field outside the wire. So for inside the wire, we have a few things we have to do. One thing is we have to find the value of K. All right, so we know that the current density is proportional to, <coughs> to S, and we know that the total current is equal to I, this capital I here. Um, so, so we need to find K if we're going to, um, yeah, if we're going to solve this problem. So to do that, we integrate this the current density um, I 
should be more consistent with my J's that I put the little hat on them. We integrate the current dens density uh, with um, the uh, the volume, right? This is a volume current density, uh, or at least no, sorry, not the volume, the the cross sectional area. All right. Uh, which uh, gives us an SDS D, uh, what should we call this? D phi. Okay. You know, maybe I should have used theta if we're trying to follow Griffiths. I, I think maybe he uses theta. I don't know. Anyway, we're integrating this, um, this current density here. All right. So plugging in uh, our KS for now, by the way, this integral will be equal to I, the total current, right? When we integrate from zero all the way out to A, integrating over the, the entire cross section of the wire. Zero out to A, put in our KS, this S is going to multiply with this S here, we get an S squared. This is just our Jacobian, all right? And then, uh, oh yeah, by the way, our uh, d phi here runs from zero to two pi, going all the way around the circle. Right, that's an easy integral, it just gives us two pi. Let's just write that out here. Uh, we have our k, and now we just need to integrate s squared from zero to a. Integral of s squared is s cubed over three. I'll bring the three out here s cubed at, and we're evaluating from 0 to a right so that's just an a cubed all right again this is equal just to the total current i and what we're looking for is this k so solving for that k we get a 3i 3i we're dividing by 2 pi right here and dividing by a cubed. <coughs> All right, now that we have our k, we now know what this uh, current density is. So now when we ask ourselves, what is the enclosed current, if we pick some Ampérian loop out a, a distance s from the center, and we ask ourselves, what's the enclosed current? Now that we know the current density, we can find that. So again, what we're doing here, we're just looking for s smaller than a um, for, our, for our second uh, situation uh, where the current increases linearly as we um, travel outward radially. Um, all right, so we're, we're trying to find i enclosed, all right? So looking at this left, the left-hand side of this equation, right? We still have our b. We still have uh, two pi s, which again is the circumference of our of our Ampérian loop right here. Okay, is equal to mu naught, the permeability of free space, and then the enclosed current. We're just going to integrate our current density again. This time we are integrating not all the way out to A, but out to S. All right, and again, this is a cross-sectional area integral, zero to two pi for uh, d phi. And then we put in our, uh, our current density and our Jacobian S and uh, ds. All right, I guess I should Maybe I should put little primes on these because these are dummy variables, but I'm kind of sloppy because we'll just put in this S at the end. Yeah, maybe I should put on primes. Whatever. All right. So uh, this phi integral, of course, gives us a 2 pi. We still have our permeability of free space here. Now let's plug in our J. Where did we solve for J? Well, J was equal to this KS, and we found what K was. So that's what we're going to plug in. 
So k is a constant. 3i over 2 pi a cubed. That's the k. And then integrating j. What's, so we put in the k, we need to just put in the s. Or since we're being a little bit more careful with our um, dummy variables or whatever, let's call that an s prime squared, right? One of the s's is from our Jacobian. The other s is from this. The reason we put a prime on it is because this is uh, our variable of integration. And then uh, our limit here is s. So that's why we're, we're keeping these. Uh, distinct. All right. Let me cancel out these two pies um, just to make things a little simpler. We have a 3i. We have our mu naught. Uh, we have this a cubed downstairs. And then, okay, so the integral of s prime squared, right? That's just going to be this s prime cubed over 3 and then we'll just plug in an s and the other limit will go to 0 so that's an s3 or s cubed over 3 now this 3 and this 3 will divide out and what do we have left we have an I times permeability of free space times S cubed over A cubed. But we're not done yet because, again, we still have uh, this 2 pi S on this side. So we need to divide both sides by that. To get our final answer, B is equal to just this divided by 2 pi S. So um, what do we have in I? We have permeability of free space. Uh, this s is going to cancel with one of those, so we're left with an s squared. And then we're dividing by uh, 2 pi. And then we have an a cubed. Let me draw a nice little line here to keep these guys separate. And again, um, I'm just going to make this a vector in the phi hat direction, just like we defined before just using the right hand rule. If our current's going this way, the magnetic field will curl around it in the direction your fingers do with your right hand. So here we go. Um, so just to recap, if we have all the current flowing only out at the very outer uh, edge or the outer surface of the wire, we get no electric field inside, and we get this mu naught i over 2 pi s field outside. This is this outside magnetic field is the same one we get if we have this slightly more complicated um, uh, current density, which is proportional to s. On the outside, that's still the magnetic field that we get. Um, but on the inside, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, we had to uh, first find out what k was by doing the, the integral over the full cross-sectional and setting that to i. So then we got k in terms of i. <laughs> and then plugged that in when we, instead of integrating over the entire cross-section, we integrate only over uh, the cross-section on the inside of our Empyrean loop. And in that way, we're able to find the magnetic field on the inside of the wire for this current, which is proportional to S. So there we go. We're good.